So uh, the last time I came to the gym, uh, you weren't here. No, I wasn't here. Well, so you appeared now. So I what's your name? Now. You're Steve. here now. I'm Steve. Steve. Coach so Steve. Steve, Coach Steve. Okay, so yeah. how long how long have you been at the gym, uh, Steve? Over a year now. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, we, we did you, boys. Were you in, like, we, did you do boxing training before this, or? Yeah, yeah. We coached for uh, Dewsbury and Batley Boxing Club in Dewsbury. Okay. Um, which was St. Linus, and then home champion, then became Dewsbury and Batley Boxing Club. Okay. And from there, kept in the game all these years, and I wanted to get back into it so I could see Harry, uh, Jack, sorry, should I say. Yeah. And um, he took me under his wing, and me, Jack and Chris, the coach, been having a good go at making it work. Okay. So far, so good. Absolutely. We've got some good lads coming on. It's a nice, friendly gym. Everybody gets on. Put a lot of hard work into these boys. Yep. And they give us a lot of hard work back. Yes. Which is really good. Um, a lot of concentration from the lads. Yep. And they are improving week by week, getting a lot better. And we just hope that we can make some champions out of them this year. That's it, isn't it? That's yeah. it. So you, you've got, I've noticed you've got some, uh, another club in here tonight. Yeah, we've got another club from Dewsbury, I think it is. So, when you bring another club in, what's the criteria for you when another club comes down? It's um, so we can have different sparring with different people. Yep. Give our lads a little wider scope for yep. other people who like to box. Because yep. when they're sparring with each other all the time, they get so used, used to, to each it. other. And they don't know what it's like to box anybody else. It's yep. a different style. Right. So this is why we do this into club, into club stuff. Yeah. So, talk to me when it does work then. Well, when it does work is when both lads are enjoying what they're doing in the ring and learning each from each other yeah. their skills and our skills. Yeah. Yeah. And they would take obviously we go back to their gym, we learn from their gym, they go back to their gym, they learn from our gym. And they, they have a bigger scope of what they're doing. Time, 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 time
Okay, we're at the training cave. I was treated to some very tasty sparring, inter-club sparring. Yes. Friendly. Very friendly. For the most part. Yes. Well, we until the punches started flying. So talk to us. Um, so who am I talking to? Uh, my name's Issy. I'm from Kissy. Bradford. Okay. Um, I've got two children who are currently boxing as amateur boxers. Uh, we my eldest son is with. Um, um, a straight coach called Mally in Bradford, he's a GB coach. Okay. And my youngest son, he's gone back to his old coach, uh, okay. Dave from Carmen Centre. Okay, alright. Um, today we've just come out sparring, we've spoken to Jack over a couple of days and then he's told us to come in today. Yep. We know the gentleman, he's a good kid. Yes. He looks after us. So we come down, we've had a nice bit of sparring, I think this is the fourth time we've been down. Okay. Uh, and we enjoy it, the kids are alright with us. Yep. It's a spa, things happen, yep. and they all shake hands. And but as a, as a dad, how we've seen in boxing at a professional level where dads get involved and it's great, and we've seen dads get involved and it's been an absolute disaster. Where do you draw the line for yourself? Are you one of these dads that, as soon as your son gets hit with a shot, oh, oh, or are you one of these dads that turn their back when your son gets a shot? A good shot, in it, like your shot, your shot gets hit. A good shot, he like yeah, suck it up. Uh, I'm the suck it up, yeah. Yeah, take I'm, it. I'm the suck it up because where we've been in our short boxing career, yeah. The majority of the gyms that we use, yes. are suck them up gyms. Yep. Now you've got the you've got the odd few gyms that are marvelous to look at. Yep. But they're not suck them up gyms. It's just. Uh, them gyms, they've got everything, everything a boxer would require, but there's not that, the smell of sweat, <laughs> yes. we could put it that way. Yes. Hard work. But that's what we're into. If you can smell sweat and hard work, you know you're at the right place and you know you're out with the right people. Fantastic. So, that's how we operate. And you're happy about that? Yes. You've got to be. You've got to be. Because it's the hardest sport in the world. Yep. And you can't be happy, happy. Right. But... There's a happiness in knowing that you meet a select few people, yes. or certain people, you get on really well with. And you've got a little boxing career and you know yeah, yeah, people yeah. and it's, it's another sense of meeting and greeting without the socialising. Absolutely. So, Let's bring your sons in. Yes, please. Craig, your name, sir? Uh, my name's Taib and I've come down to the training camp for a few rounds of sparring today. Taib, do you want to come around for me, sir? Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, so I've come down to the training camp for a few rounds today. I've got some good rounds in thanks to Jack and a few of these lads and I've overall enjoyed it and got some good rounds in. Okay, so how did you find the sparring today? I know it got a bit tasty in there for you. Yeah, the sparring today was very intense. It was at a good level, all friendly though and I really enjoyed it. So. Talk me through the situation. You're in there sparring. Yeah. I mean, you, I saw you, and you were in. I, I saw the zone. You're ready, yeah, yeah. ready to spar, of course. When you come to these sparring sessions, I mean, are you aware of who you're sparring beforehand, or is it just completely unknown? No, no, I'm usually aware that I'm sparring, so I'll get prepared for it. I'm usually ready for it. Yeah, you know I mean, when I used to spar, I like used to into club sparring. I didn't know who the guy was. I didn't know who the guy was. All I knew was the guy was coming in, and my, I was didn't want to embarrass my trainer. So I was super hyped. Yeah, well, that, that was the case first time round, but I've been here a few times, and so now I know my opponent, we get to know each other, and makes the sparring a little bit better, I think. So today, from that sparring session, I did get heated. There were some blows flown from bo both ends, some good shots from both ends. What do you gain from that? Like when, it, when a guy cracks you with a good shot, or he works you to the body, or yeah. brings one upstairs, what goes through your mind? Well, it shows me really what I need to be working on and what is coming up with it, so I need to focus on that and try and find ways around it. Because that's what the sparring's about, really, because you don't want to be in that situation in a fight. Yeah. So that's what the sparring's for, so if you know you're slipping up in this area, you want to focus on that. Yeah. And that's what the sparring's really for. So, when you're getting hit with a good shot, what's the difference between you losing it and going completely Hulk, and then all... all the other way, just staying calm and cool. Well, what I try to do is when I take a shot, stay composed about it and try to see how what mistakes I made to get hit with that shot and what he's really doing. So try and work my, try and work my way around. It. So you walk away from the sparring session today. What do you get? What do you gain today? You get in the car. Dad takes you home. What do you think about when you're going home? Well, I just review what I've done and the good and bad. So I know that I won't mistake make them mistakes next time and the things I can focus on the next time I come. Dad, Wilder Fury, what's your thoughts? Well, I've told me lads it's not happening. It's not happening? I can't see it. Something's going to go wrong, somewhere down the line. December 1st? Yes. Long way away. I can't see it. Tyson Fury, what, you had two fights? Yeah. Against novices. One kid he picked up. He was like a baby in his hand. Yeah. I don't think he's ready, but I, first of all, I don't see it happening. I can't see it happening. Okay. Well, you had, you had the press conferences, you had the tour, and when, and I'm sure you'll, you'll see plenty of them and they're caved in as soon as it comes to fight night or a weekend before fight night. I've, got, I've just got this feeling it's not happening. For some strange reason, I don't know why, and in fact I do, I think Tyson Fury hasn't had the time frame. He says he's ready. He says he's ready. He's telling the world he's ready, so... Yes. <laughs> Well, that's Tyson Fury for you. He could have been doing what he was doing two years ago and still told you that he was ready for you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyson Fury talks the talk. Yeah. Obviously, he can walk the walk. Uh -huh. I just don't think he's ready for this one. Have you seen the two opponents he said and his comeback? What have you thought of them? <laughs> what has everyone thought of them? Look, come on, they're right. They weren't even opponents. You don't go in against so them. He says I'm a linear champion. Yeah. And I'm, he was, okay, you're coming back from two years out. Yeah. But a linear champion, even at his worst, should be fighting them kind of fighters. If you are a, if you say, I promise you, Ali come out of a jail, X amount of years, you could have put him out against any British champion at the time, any boxing champion of their country at the time, he would have beat him. Now, could you say that about Tyson Fury, who took two years off? He went in against people like that fighters. So, uh, how do you think he goes with him and Wilder? Tyson, now saying all that, Tyson Fury, if it goes, if it happens, it goes the distance, Tyson's winning by not getting chin. Okay. Because his chin's going to be out of the way and his arm's going to be go nowhere and he's not going to let him leave the chin. Now, if Wilder connects, now that's a different story altogether. I don't think I've seen, other than Tyson Fury hit himself really hard, I don't think anybody else has really hit him really hard. Okay. So, in that sense, you can't compare us. What's going to happen? But if you're, if you, if you were a betting man, or if you were going to put a sneaky fiver on, where would you go? Fury. I just remembered Ortiz as well. Yeah. Forty-nine-year-old man beat up. Well, they say he's forty-nine. I think he's forty-one, but forty-nine. <coughs> let's say forty-nine-year-old. Two more rounds. I think he might have had Wilder. So. I think I'm going for boxing, 
don't know why, but Tyson Fury to beat WBC champion again. Wow, sounds good. What do you think? Uh, so, personally, about Tyson, I don't think he's ready. He's had two years out, and the people who he's for and how he's done it, I don't think he's ready for Wilder. Before the Klitschko fight, I think he was ready. He could have. If Wilder was at the level he's at now, he could have been there, but coming out from two years, I don't think he's doing anything. So what do you think happens to Tyson Fury? Uh, I think if he plays it clever, he could get away with winning the 12 rounds, but the shape he's in, I don't think he could go 12 rounds and he's going to get beat by Wilder. How? Like, he can't keep the pace and dodging them punches and avoiding it is going to get very tired and cost him mistakes. And then what will happen? And then I think uh, Wilder's going to knock him out. Well, not knock him out, but get him down and maybe stop him. Hi. Thanks.